I'll tell you a story. Um, it's sort of about stand-up, you know, my journey, my process, but it's also a story in which I am a victim. You know? And I want to tell you a story where I am a victim so that later, when I make fun of victims, it's not justified, but it's at least explained by the PTSD, right? It's at least somewhat okay. Um, and so, when I was 21, uh, I moved to Los Angeles to, uh, I guess, just burn bridges. That's mostly what I did. Uh, but I got out there, and I was there maybe three hours, and uh, I went to the Hollywood Improv, which is this great place, you know, and it's like, it's kind of powerful for a comic, because you get there, and they got this mural with all these famous comedians on the wall. It's like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Mitzi Shore's son, you know, it's like all these people you respect. Jerry Seinfeld, the guy from the Sham Wow commercial. It's like, wow, I'm among the stars. And uh, I got there, immediately started drinking, uh, blacked out. The last thing I remember is shaking one of the managers, going, uh, I'm going to fucking die out here. And so, uh, kind of a histrionic piece of shit drunk I was, so it was good. And then I came to uh, uh, in the alley behind the club, which I've gotten drunk enough to get kicked out of bars before, but never where they're like, let's get this guy out of here. And they're like, but with the garbage, put him in the garbage. The garbage. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, back where he belongs, in the alley with the rats. Um, and then I, my plan was, is like, you know, I'm like trying to construct an apology. I'm like, fuck it, I'll just leave. I'm going to find my car. And then I, a week prior, I had read about a taxidermy school in Montana. And I was going to take the money I had and go to Montana and apply to the taxidermy school and get a, a bear cape and then make bear pants, where you take the lower half of the bear pelt, you suspend a waist with a hula hoop and straps around the shoulders, and then you just walk around the lower half. But I couldn't find my car, so that's why we don't have bear pants now. We're, 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 we're supposed to have flying cars and bear pants. Well, sorry, I drank myself into a coma, so that's what happened. But I couldn't find my car. And then I was just, I took one wrong turn and then another one, and then I'm like wandering around West Hollywood just screaming at the top of my lungs. I'm like, ah, oh, I hate my life or whatever. <laughs> and this guy uh, in a Prius pulls up uh, next to me. He rolls down the window and he's like, uh, hey, buddy. And I was like, what? You know, doing that like first week back at the gym posture, you know? And you're like, I did one set. I deserve the right to walk around like this. You know? And uh, he's like, are you okay? Yeah, are you all right? And I like sort of broke down. I was like, uh, no, man, I'll be honest with you. I'm lost. You know, I don't have any friends here. And, you know, I don't know where my car is. This is like a pretty bad night for me. He goes, uh, well, I can mean, get my car. I'll help you out. And I was like, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> I, mean, I certainly didn't learn any lessons about this as a child. I was like, a stranger's car. And so we had a car and, uh, He's like, where do you need to go? And he had a GPS, and I didn't really know how it worked. So I was like, to my car. I thought I didn't say that. And I just start driving. We're driving for a while, you know, and I'm like bitching about things. I'm like, you know another thing. He's like, yeah, I hear you, buddy. Then I started to get weirded out, right? Because I walked from my car to the club. I certainly don't remember walking on the highway, you know? I don't know why we're driving that far. So I'm like, what? Uh, where are we going? You know, like, what, what's going on here? He's like, well, we just... Just two guys hanging out, you know? We're just getting to know each other. 3 a.m. on a Wednesday, making friends. It's a pretty normal occurrence here in Hollywood, you know? I don't know why you're being weird about it. I'm like, okay, I, you need to let me out of your car, man. I'm like, I'm nervous. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And then he starts putting his hand, he starts grab, pulling my dick out of my pants. Uh, he, says, right? uh, he puts his hand up my basketball shorts that I was wearing. Uh, the basketball shorts and a Red Fox t-shirt. So, uh, which I guess I deserved it. I don't know. I don't know. But, and which is funny because then I think back to the club and they had to have a conversation at some point where they're like, man, we got to kick this poor retarded guy out of here. He's had too much candy. I don't even know if he's supposed to serve that legally. To or whatever. This guy's like pulling, pulling my dick out of my pants and I bat his hand away. I was like, man, let me out of your fucking car or else. And or else is he gets to have sex with me. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I got nothing. I don't know karate. I certainly don't know in the car karate. You know, Jason Statham shit. How do you learn that? Why did this, uh, fuck jujitsu? I'm going to learn the thing where you break someone's wrist through a steering wheel. That's what you do.
But uh, yeah, no, it was like if I can't figure out these, you know, weird Japanese efficiency locks, I guess I'm just a lady now. That's what I'm like. <laughs> but he pulled over and let me out. And a part of me wishes he did it. You know, he didn't let me out of the car in an alternate universe, just for story's sake, because I can't think of a better, more poetic analogy for living in Los Angeles than being violently sodomized in a Prius. <laughs> that experience, all the pretenses of helping people while. You know, something horrific is happening for you, so you could be in commercials, I guess that's... Um, so, me too, is my point. <laughs>